Hey, what's going on guys? My name is The Problem Team. Welcome back to a brand new video. What for you guys today is my highly anticipated Inuasano manga ranking video. If you guys have been watching the channel, then you'll know that I've recently been working my way through Inuasano's English published catalog. And after finishing Solonin a couple days ago, I finally completed all of the Inuasano manga that I have in my collection. And I believe every series that's put out by Asano in English. And I promise that once I finished all this manga that's out in English, then I do a video kind of ranking this series as far as they fall in my personal opinion. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to be ranking all this manga that's put out physically in English. I'm going to ranking all those series from worst to best. Now before we get started, just a couple things to keep in mind. First off, obviously this is all my opinion. It's all subjective to me. You can like some series that I don't like over a series that I do like. You know, at the end of the day, what you like is what you like. And I'm very open to continuing this conversation in the comments below. Granted, it's done respectfully. The second thing is that this video is only considering manga that's put out physically in English. So obviously as more series that are only in Japanese, even if they are physically in Japanese, if it's not put out in English physically in the, here in the United States, then I'm not going to put it in this video. The manga that we're going to be considering for this video is Goodnight Pun Pun, Solonin, Dead Dead Demons, Girl on the Shore, Nijiga Harla Holograph, What a Wonderful World, and Downfall. And the third and final thing is that these aren't going to be full manga reviews for each series. I'm just going to go over some things I briefly thought were good, that I thought were bad, and why they're placed in the places that I put them. With all that being said, if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more manga videos just like this. And without further ado, let's get right into the ranking. So starting off the list at number seven, the very bottom, the worst Inuit song and manga that I've read that is out physically would of course have to be Girl on the Shore. And I don't think that this take is too controversial, but I'll give some reasons as to why I think that this is the worst out of Inuit Sano's English catalog. The first thing I didn't like about this manga is the characters, whether it be the main girl character, the boy character, or any of the really supporting characters, I just found them all to be unlikable or just not memorable at all. I also thought that some of the actions and decisions made by the characters really made no sense and this whole book just kind of seemed to be clouded in this really edgy angst. And yes, I know the characters are young, they make stupid, rash decisions, but there are other manga where characters do that same thing and I actually like those series, whereas this one it just kind of felt meaningless and overly angsty. And while the story wasn't the worst thing in the world, I didn't find it overly engaging. I basically just kept reading this to figure out what was going to happen with the characters but I didn't really care one way or another. I just kind of wanted to see what would happen. The story wasn't completely awful. The spine and the cover are, you know, pretty cool. So I guess those are about the only positives I can really think of right now for this series. And of course, if you want to know my full opinions on Girl on the Shore, I made a full manga review just for this little book right here. So you can go check that out after this video. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Next up at number six, we have Nijigahara Holograph. Now I should mention that from this point on, all these series I'm going to be talking about are series that I did enjoy just to varying degrees. So I did like Nijigahara Holograph, but compared to his other manga that I've yet to get to, I would say this is probably the one I enjoyed the least. Nijigahara Holograph is definitely Inyo Asano's most experimental manga to date. It tries to do a lot of unique things with timelines, symbolism, and for this reason, the story gets kind of convoluted at points. Now, some will argue that the ambiguity of this manga makes it so much better, and to a point, I agree, but also in a kind of argument towards that, I also like to know what's going on when I read a series. So yes, while I did enjoy how this manga kind of leaves it to you to fill in the gaps and to really decide what you think happens, I also kind of would like to have more of a concrete understanding of what was going on. But other than that, I thought the story was pretty interesting, even if I didn't know what was going on 100% of the time. I thought the characters were very likable, and overall, the story had me always wondering what was going to happen and how it was going to end, so it kept me very entertained all the way throughout. I wouldn't recommend this series to any new manga readers who are looking to get into Inuyasano. I would probably only recommend it to people who have read some of the stuff in the past. Only then would I say that you should probably go ahead and check out the series. Next up at number five, we have his two volume short story compilation, What a Wonderful World. Now I must say, reading this series was a very pleasant surprise as I wasn't exactly expecting a whole lot when I read this after seeing some mixed opinions on it, but I gotta say this was a very enjoyable read. Now personally, I'm not a huge fan of short story compilations. I more so find myself gravitating towards, you know, full fleshed out stories, but I must say there were some really good stories in here that I did end up enjoying. Now as for the actual short stories themselves, there's a great variety of emotions and concepts and characters that are portrayed in this manga. I'd say that my favorite story out of this entire collection would probably have to be Syrup. It's about this guy named Syrup who's addicted to cough syrup and he has dreams of being a bird and flying and the stories in the series are accompanied with different emotions such as a feeling of freedom, some bittersweet feelings of like nostalgia, and you know, dreams, making dreams come true, you know, stuff like that, and there's a pretty good variety of that in this series. Now, I wouldn't say that any of the short stories in the series are particularly memorable or really stuck with me for weeks or months. 
I would say that reading this series was a very pleasant experience that had me thinking for the entire day after I read it. Next up, at the halfway point, number four, we have Downfall. Downfall is definitely one of Inuasano's more somber and I guess depressing manga, so keep that in mind if you're interested in checking this one out. I guess if you couldn't already tell by the title of the book, um, this series is about the kind of downfall or downward spiral that this mangaka faces in his life as he has many different issues such as his relationship is kind of falling apart as well as he had a taste of fame with one of his manga series but in recent years he really can't find that spark to keep writing anything. One thing that makes this series especially impactful and sad is that no doubt there's some inspiration from Inuosano's personal life that he put into this series of a manga who's struggling with all these issues. So I'm pretty sure that to some degree we get a little bit of a window into Inuosano's personal struggles through Downfall. Downfall is a pretty quick read. I really enjoyed my entire read through of this. I read it in one sitting, just breezed right through it and enjoyed every single second of it. The characters are all very enjoyable, even though they're not the uh, happiest of people. And the ending of the series is one of my favorites in all of Asano manga, and it kind of comes full circle from the very beginning. I mean, Oh, this is perfect. So if you're looking for a little bit more of a somber or mature manga, I would highly recommend you check out Downfall. All right, so coming in at the number three spot, we have Solonin. Solonin is about a young adult female named Mako, and she's working this office job. She's unsatisfied with her life, so she quits her job looking for some freedom. And Solonin follows the life of her and her boyfriend and his band as they just kind of explore, you know, the joys of music and young adulthood. Now obviously I won't spoil anything for this manga, but just know that there are some pretty sad moments as well as some very happy moments, as well as some comedy sprinkled in here and there that's pretty typical of Inu Asano. What I really love about Solonin is how real it feels, you know, watching this group of young adults as they, you know, play in their band and try to figure out what they want to do with their lives. It all felt very real and I related to a lot of what they went over in this series. Personally, as a college student, you know, I'm not 100% sure on what I want to do with my life. I still have a lot of questions and I'm still figuring things out, but I really felt like I could relate to the characters in this series and it was very comforting and interesting. And there's also the music aspect. I love music, I play instruments, and I really thought that the whole band aspect and the expression of the joy that comes with playing music, I thought was done absolutely perfectly in this series. And that's just another reason why I really loved it. I would say this is probably the manga that I recommend anyone who's looking to get into Inu Asano as their very first series. Obviously there's some others that you can enjoy as your first read, but I would say this is probably his most easy to understand and easiest to enjoy series from him. You know, it's pretty straightforward, but still absolutely wonderful. So coming in at number two, his second best manga, in my opinion, I know this one's gonna ruffle some feathers, but at number two, we have Goodnight Pun Pun. Now, before you guys just flood to the comments and bombard me with hate saying, Pun Pun is the best series ever. Why don't you like this series? Guys, I absolutely adore this series so much. Goodnight Pun Pun is one of, if not the most, you know, thought-provoking, painfully relatable series that I've ever read. And for that reason, this series will always have the highest recommendation from me. If you guys aren't familiar with the story, basically it follows a boy named Pun Pun as he goes from elementary school to uh, being an adult and all the problems that his life comes with. He has some very, very sad things going on in his life. Let's just say that Pun Pun has a very hard life with lots of problems, definitely not ideal. And uh, yeah, this is definitely one of his more depressing series. What I really enjoyed about Pun Pun is how I could relate to some of the feelings that Pun Pun feels throughout this manga. Obviously not like the most intense, um, you know, depressing ones, but some of the things they encounter is like his relationship with uh, Aiko, the girl. And this goes for all of Inuasana's manga, but I really loved the environment with the artwork that's absolutely spectacular and photorealistic. I thought that it was utilized to build the world and really make this feel like a real person's story. Goodnight Pun Pun is very philosophical, very edgy, and I absolutely love it for that. So if you're looking for something pretty sad and you're ready to get in your feels a little bit, I would highly, highly recommend you check out Goodnight Pun Pun if you have not already. And of course, for the number one spot, there's only one series left to get to in this video. And of course, that would have to be Girl on the Shore, baby. I lied. This is the best manga that I've ever read. But of course, my favorite Inuasano manga that I've ever read would have to be Dead Dead Demons, Dead 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 Destruction. No, I'm not taking any chances. I had to make sure I 100% got the name right. Now, after talking about series such as Goodnight Pun Pun, Downfall, Nijigahara Holograph, which are all pretty sad and somber, I'm pleased to say that Dead Dead Demons is just such a joy to read. While there are some more mature themes in Dead Dead Demons, they're less emotional, such as the other series I just mentioned, and they're more philosophical and political. The series kind of starts off as a slice of life following these girls in high school as they graduate to college. All the while, there's this looming threat of this massive spaceship that's been sending over Japan that invaded, I think, a few years ago. And our main characters, Kadoda and Iran, are just some of my favorite manga characters ever that I've read. It's just such a joy watching their lives unfold and what they're thinking, given the current situation they're in, as well as the side cast and all these supporting characters 
they're all just so likable and I really do enjoy seeing them in each volume of this series. Honestly, Dead Dead Demons really has it all. I mean, it's funny, it's suspenseful, at volume like 7 or 8, the story just gets flipped on its head and it goes completely crazy. Not to mention the absolutely incredible artwork, I mean the spaceship especially and just the cityscape is drawn to such immense detail, it really is one of his most immersive series I've found. So with all those things being said, I would have to give my number one spot of all Inuasana manga that I've read to Dead Dead Demons. I have a first special review of this series, I think up to the third volume of my thoughts on the series. So if you can hear my thoughts a little bit more into detail about the inner workings of this series, my thoughts on it, I would highly recommend checking out the video. Again, link will be in the description. Anyways guys, this has been my Inuosano manga ranking video. Hope you guys did enjoy, and if you want to continue this discussion in the comments, talk about any of the series, I am more than happy to discuss all these series with you guys in the comments below. And of course, if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more manga videos just like this. So yeah. This has been The Promji, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and as always, hope to catch you in the next one.